This right here is an M1 MacBook Air. And the absolutely beautiful thing about it is it is running Linux, specifically Acai Linux, which if you don't know, has been doing absolute wonders when it comes to getting Linux to work on Apple Silicon. Apple Silicon being probably, in my opinion, the most impressive processor that you can have in a computer. Incredibly powerful, the energy efficiency is ridiculous, and in typical Apple fashion, they're not really making it super easy to go ahead and do things like this, install other operating systems on Apple Silicon. And the team behind this distribution are absolute magicians. A lot of what they've done to get this to work has been literally reverse engineering drivers and components. And as of literally yesterday, it has gotten way better. This right here is their latest blog post. Apple GPU drivers are now in Acai Linux. Now before this, basic things would work. You could go on a web browser, watch YouTube videos, just do your everyday tasks. But when you tried to load up anything slightly graphical intensive, it just did not work. But now if we scroll down here, you can see that this release features work in progress for OpenGL 2.1 and OpenGL ES 2.0 with support for all current M1 series systems, giving us that full hardware acceleration that we need to do things such as playing older 3D games. And this hardware is so good in theory with more work, it can get 4K at 60 frames per second. And clearly this is the very first release of this, so they haven't done Vulcan drivers, there's a lot of bugs, glitchiness. I personally ran into some issues when I was playing around with it trying to get certain things to launch, but what did launch was rather impressive, and we're going to get into that right after I thank, real quick, the sponsor of today's video, Linode. It has solutions for you, whether if you want a bare bones Linux install with your choice of a wide variety of Linux distributions, or you want to use one of their one-click installers. I've been using them for years at this point, and it has been remarkable customer service, performance, all that. And if you use the link down below, you get a $100 60-day credit. So with that, let's actually back up a little bit. Since the last time we checked this out, I went ahead and wiped it because it really wasn't ready for daily use. The process of uninstalling it's pretty simple. You just have to do some manual partition work. And the process of reinstalling it is super simple. All you do is run their little script. It will go ahead and download everything, help you resize the partitions, install it. It does a lot of the heavy lifting for you and it literally walks you through all the steps. It's super easy. It'll go ahead and reboot about two times during the process and then you can go ahead and set it up like you would any other Linux distribution. I haven't mentioned already, but it is a Arch base. So you're gonna be using the Pac-Man package manager, which the very first thing in this new install that I did was update the system after I connected to the Wi-Fi, of course. And again, that process was seamless. And at this point, I just wanted to see how the GPU drivers are performing before we go ahead and actually upgrade them. So I went ahead and installed Super Tux Car, a very fun kind of a Mario Kart-like game featuring open source characters. I do recommend if you've never tried it out before. But this right here is Super Tux Kart without the new GPU drivers. And you can see I'm probably getting roughly two to three frames per second. The fact it launches is cool, but it is absolutely not playable. Now, after I finally was able to click the menu button and get the thing to close, I went back to the website where they had the announcements and the actual steps to go ahead and get this. Again, very alpha level software here. But all we needed to do was install Linux Acai Edge, as well as their Edge Mesa drivers. After you replace the existing Mesa with Edge, what you needed to do was update Grub, Reboot your system and log into the Wayland instance after you go ahead and install it. And boom, easy as that, we now have full hardware acceleration, well, full hardware acceleration on this M1 Air. So repeating the process, I opened up Super Tux Cart and the performance was absolutely fantastic. I expected some stuttering, a little bit of screen tearing even, and I didn't even get that. In this, I didn't have a frame counter available to me, but it was super smooth, and if I was a guessing man, it would be somewhere like 60 to 90 frames per second. Super smooth. So just with this release, Linux on the M1 or M2, just the Apple Silicon processors, has gotten significantly better. And again, this is alpha level software that was just released. And none of this would have even been possible to us without the hard work of the open source community and particularly the team on this project. You guys are truly awesome and your work is definitely appreciated. Myself and literally everybody else is looking forward to the future developments of this project. And I'm really excited for the day in which that I get to use Linux on this machine full time. You know what I'm gonna do real quick? I'm gonna run a Geekbench test to let's see if it even works. Oh cool, it's actually running. Look at that, it's cooking.
and the results are in. It's a little less than a native uh, Mac OS performance, which is fine. We're getting about 15, well, close to 1600 on the single core score on Linux with mid 1700 single core on Mac OS. And then for multi-core score, we're getting about 6,500 on Linux and about 7,700 on Mac OS. And the score is even closer, but not quite there to running Ubuntu and UTM virtualization, for example, with Mac OS as the host system. But as time goes on, drivers are refined and all that. I do see this uh, getting real close or even potentially surpassing when it comes to synthetic benchmarks. With all that, like always, anything I mentioned will be linked down below. I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.